we mentioned earlier, Brian Oxman, uh, a family attorney for the Jacksons, uh, had uh, given a rather controversial or certainly surprising interview uh, earlier in the evening. Mr. Oxman has joined us now. Thank you for your time, sir. No, it is nice to talk to you, Keith, and it is not surprising. It is something which I have warned of, which I told everyone that I would be very outspoken about if somehow Michael Jackson wound up in this condition. Uh, can you summarize for us what, what it is you believe uh, brought upon his death? I do not know what's brought about his death. I am absolutely heartbroken, Keith. It is something which I have rarely experienced. I saw Randy Jackson in the hospital. I hugged him. He was unable to speak to me. I saw Jermaine Jackson here in the hospital. We hugged. We cried. We weren't even able to talk. The family has been together. It has been very quiet. It's been very somber. It is something which is beyond comprehension. Michael Jackson was my friend. I've known him for more than two decades. I defended him because he was innocent. And now to find him here at UCLA, the fans are playing music that is bouncing off the walls of the UCLA Medical Center. The helicopters are circling overhead. It is one of the most surreal experiences of my life. Um, you were quoted earlier as saying that this was uh, a result or could have been a result of a problem with prescription medication. Are you, are you sticking to that assessment? I do not know what the problem is that brought this here. I do know that I had warned of the use of prescription medications in the past. And I have said to many members of the family that if one day Michael wound up in this condition, the words exactly, or as if he woke up dead one day, that I was going to speak loud and clear about what I saw as the abuse of medications and people who had enabled him. I cannot say for sure what happened. We're going to have to await the results of tests to find out precisely what it is. Jumping to conclusions is not what we should do, but I do know that this is something which we all feared in this family, and here we are. You say in the past. Can you put that in some sort of time frame, how far in the past you were aware of this? Within the last two years, we have been saying it continuously. To what degree can you detail what, you have de what you've described as, as prescription uh, medication abuse? I will not get into the specifics of the medications because they are Michael's private matter, and I only know what I have said to all of the family members, and that is, is that we feared that this kind of thing would happen, and here we are. I won't jump to conclusions. I will not point fingers, but when the results of this testing is going to be completed, I intend to be very loud and very vocal depending on the outcome of those tests. There was a, a statement made by a reporter earlier this evening in response to your previous interview on this subject that suggested that during uh, the last few years, on several occasions, Michael Jackson has had said, uh, Brian Oxman does not represent and does not speak for me. Would you care to comment I'll about that? I speak for myself. I am, have been with this family. I've been there when their children were born. I've been there when their ex-wives have died in, involving just tragic circumstances. They are my friends. I have never spoken for anybody except myself. You had contrasted the uh, story of Michael Jackson and this particular subject uh, with that of the most infamous recent case uh, that was proved later to be uh, uh, truly a case of abuse of prescription medications, that of the death of the, uh, the model and actress Anna Nicole Smith. Can you give us a perspective uh, 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 in terms of the degree that, that uh, this was a problem in her life compared to the problem you perceive it was in Michael Jackson's life? There have been lawsuits where Michael was sued by pharmacies for hundreds of thousands of dollars of medications. It's a matter that, of public record where the prescriptions have been taken out for him we have warned of this kind of thing happening. Keith, I don't know what the result of this examination will be. I only know that I am heartbroken. And there's a helicopter coming in. I will try and get to a place which is a little bit quiet. As you can tell, UCLA Medical Center is a bustling hub of, of activity. Yeah. It's a sheriff's helicopter, and Lord, it's, it's quite an experience here.
You said uh, that you saw uh, several members of the family afterwards. Uh, I, I, w was there any sense from them uh, of, of illness? Was there any sense of fear no. of this at the, in the last few days or weeks or months? No, there's been no particular warning of this kind of an incident happening. We've not heard of any particular illness or disability that Michael's been under. There had been descriptions that um, he, he did not eat enough, that he was not, uh, that he was very sparse in terms of, of, of meeting his dietary requirements. Can you speak to that? He's actually been doing very good as of recent days, and uh, that's been Michael Jackson's life from the time he first started performing as a young man. So uh, his uh, eating habits have not really changed. One last question on this, Mr. Oxman. The, the, the first story about the concerts and the preparations that he was making for this, the rehearsals, the six-hour-long rehearsals at the Staples Center and other venues in Southern California, was that uh, he actually had to be pulled back, that people were saying to him, you're overdoing it, you're, you're, you're dangering, endangering your, uh, if not necessarily your health to the degree that we saw it endangered fatally today, but that there was, that he wanted to be, he wanted to practice more, he wanted to rehearse more, he wanted to work out more. Can you speak to that at all? Oh, yes. He was having the rehearsals. He was trying to get himself into condition, but again, the use of medications were getting in the way. We don't know, and Keith, I want to, to tell you in no uncertain terms, we do not know what caused this. For all we know, it could be a complete natural cause. Mm -hmm. Just do not know. I do not want to jump to conclusions. I only know that I have warned of this, and I will wait and bide my time and see what the results are of the toxicology tests. All right, I said one last question, but I had one procedural one. Perhaps you can clear this up for us. We were told there was to be a news conference involving members of this family um, in, uh, I guess we're coming up almost an hour ago. Do you know anything about whether or not they are going to address the media tonight? tonight? There were plans to address the media tonight, but they are stunned. This family is absolutely stunned. They are crying. They are heartbroken. I cannot tell you the feeling that I got when I hugged Randy Jackson and he just looked at me because there is a lot of history between us. He is my friend. Michael was my friend. And when I hugged Jermaine, we just cried. This is sad, Keith. I like this man. He was a kind and good man. Brian Oxman, uh, attorney uh, uh, associated with the Jackson family, and we thank you for your time and our condolences to you on your loss. Thank you, Keith.